So it was October 2014, we had just wrapped a short I made called Popeye the Pizza Man. And I think I was on the high of wrapping a film, wanting to make the next film. And somehow I found this article online about Hitler's taste testers. Camera speeds. Sound speeds. Set to take two, Mark. The idea of people possibly eating their last meal of their life. What would you talk about at that table? I think it's just really ambitious to, to try something like this, where it's, it's black and white, it's period, all in German. Well, first of all, what struck me was that I've never read anything like it. It was just so tight. It was this very contained piece that felt larger than the sum of its parts. The themes just really jump out in this one. And just how he's shooting it, the way he's going about it, everything felt so perfect. Man, these women were soldiers every meal three times a day. Where does this strength come from? I often wonder. And so I have the utmost admiration and respect for Anna. We were on? Yeah. Cool. So I met Justin probably about eight years ago. I've worked with Justin. It's been over 10 years ago. When he picked me up at the airport and he grabbed my bags. Justin and I got to work together this past summer. I met him when I was in high school. I was the gaffer and he was the second AC. So one of the amazing things that a film set offers is the time to remember how all the dots are connected of how you met her and him. Like, I was a PA on a TV movie when I met Rachel and I cast Abby, Stephanie's sister, on a film I made, Riff Raff. And one of the things that's really cool about this film is the connection with Film Riot. I've known Justin for a really long time. Uh, he actually sent me some of his short films way, way back in the day, uh, early Film Riot days, just sending me his short films to check out. And you know, he's one of very few people that stuck out to me that I need to keep an eye on this kid as he grows. And that led to me when I got a little more serious about not just making sketches and making short films, I made a film called Number 14. just, man, this guy is so talented. So I just reached out to him and we need to do stuff together and we stay connected and... Well, it worked. Yeah. Months later, he flew me to Texas to do Proximity. <laughs> and then eventually he came and worked for Film Riot. No, shies with my Namo! Which was fantastic to have him and, and he really boosted the show and just how we operate even and we just became very very close and I was able to see firsthand his work ethic you know his mind his artistry and it was just something that I just wanted to be a part of. Second sticks! It takes you being on someone else's set to actually do something. <laughs> well yeah that's fair. When he originally hired me he said I don't care if you stay here for two years or ten years I just want to help you be a filmmaker. You know, it's just the filmmaking community when you have those types of friends and connections, it really becomes family lifting each other up, you know. He helped me do the things that I want to do and reach my goals and, you know, I want to do the same for him. Oh, hey, Joe! Hey! Oh, yeah! When Ryan and Josh became involved with Guest of Honor, it was such a burden off of our shoulders. We were able to get a, a couple of partners on this. We got Aperture, uh, Lens Pro, and Didi Mics. With everything that we do, we reach out to sponsors that make gear that we really like or, you know, just have the same sort of outlook that we have. And Aperture, Lens Pro, Indy, all are very indie-minded, love the indie community. So they were an obvious choice to go to for this. And they saw the vision for it, really dug it, and they wanted to be a part of it. Uh, so they helped make all of this happen. For someone who funds all their films themselves and who can't do that forever because I'm not rich at all, it was an amazing gift. Guys with their power decided to use that power for somebody with less power. But it goes beyond the film industry. It just speaks to uh, good human beings. I just really believe in Justin as an artist and as a person. I don't know that I've met a better person than Justin or somebody that deserves it more than Justin. 
So like any film, but especially this one, finding the right location was absolutely vital. Thankfully, I met Matt Wins, who runs The River Place, which is a soundstage and event venue. As soon as he handed me the script and I read through it, I knew that it had to happen here. It took a while, it was a process to find the right space for him, but we have 103,000 square feet under roof and lots of different spaces, and we were able to find a great location. So originally I was gonna build a set there, but that quickly became too expensive, so Matt showed me some other spaces and some other rooms, and that led us to the Baker Room. And when he opened the door, it's this very simple room. It was under construction, the carpet was ripped out. It has this like two shaded paints in between this wood trim, and it was exactly what I wrote. All I'm gonna do is put some stuff on the wall and put a table and call it good. And funny enough, why it was called the Baker Room is because the televangelist in the 1980s, Jim Baker, who had his TV studio at this soundstage at that time. The PTL Television Network presents Jim Baker. Hey, man. The room that we shot Guest of Honor in was his old dressing room. The hallway from the soundstage to his dressing room where Silvio walks, it's lined with rocks. Why? I don't know. One of the big reasons for shooting at the River Place was the fact that I would never have to company move. The ability to shoot the cafe scene in the church lobby and the ability to shoot most of the film in Jim Baker's dressing room and then out behind the building are the woods where we did the whole scene. And that's like the only way that we shot on the schedule that we had. There's a combined 30 years of lighting experience in the air making this happen for us right now. So uh, just knowing that we're in, we're resting on some strong and beautiful shoulders, it's really putting my mind at ease. Our main set was lit with a six by six softbox that contained a black white griff where we bounced in eight quasars, two quasars per side. And we were able to turn off to taste depending on camera angle. We had a duotine skirt around the sides and then we diffused all of that with unbleached muslin. Lighting a movie in black and white is a little misleading these days because you're really lighting it in color still and then in post changing it over to black and white unless you choose to go with the film and we're shooting on Alexa. For us it was really a more of figuring out in the transition with the LUT how we could color stuff during the shooting that would add to the mid-tones and into the darkness. And also because of the time period of the piece, it was chosen to give it a little bit more of a gritty feel by not being as beauty lit. Uh, we're still softening our lighting, but we're choosing to put it in kind of a harsher zone on the face. So we looked at uh, Silvio and some of the girls and, and figured out what would not necessarily make them unattractive, but just the right spot to add to visually what's going on within the script itself. The lights that we used in the ceiling on the wall were aperture mini 20s. You know, it's an unnatural feel to have lights specifically spotting in the background, but you'll see uh, even in historical stuff that there's usually something highlighting things that are important to people. And so for Silvio's character, we felt that in this location, it's kind of a little shrine, uh, and that was something that interested Justin. The way that I shot the opening scene was, how do I reveal each piece of information in this world? So here's this food, here's who it's about. Oh, here's who it's also about. Okay, so stakes are really high. Der Führer kommt! Große Dinge erwarten dich. Du musst bereit sein dafür. Das hat er mir gesagt damals. Ganz am Anfang. Nun kommt schon. Esst! Keiner mag eine schwache Frau. Come on! 
Justin is so organized, it's crazy. All the shot lists, you know, like he had everything storyboarded out. He has drawings of it, you know, of everything. Action. Justin's a director with a strong vision. And what comes with that often is a strong sense of camera direction, a strong sense of composition, and a strong sense of lighting. What that creates is an environment of precision and efficiency. So when we're developing shots together, uh, it's, it's a joy for me to, to work with a director who knows exactly where he wants to go and how he does it. Because when we can build on those foundations, it's when we're in the moment and live that we can start to strip them away if we need to. Do you want to, you want to start this all over? Like the, all the ideas were yours for BTS? <laughs> <laughs> when Justin and I have collaborated in the past, it's been from a static camera. So when we've looked at things together in the future, we've always talked about what camera moves matter. And one of the things Justin brought to the table right at the top was zoom shots. And there was moments to use a Dana Dolly. <laughs> there were moments to use steady cam. I've been seeing his short projects for years, and I've always wanted to be a part of one. And he said, hey, I got one shot. And I was like, I'm in. Those aren't always featured elements of the things we've collaborated on, but uh, we also knew that a, a core of this project would also be from a still position as observers. Let's go back to one, Stephanie, one more. You know, sometimes if you get in an argument and you say something, but you know, sometimes later we think, oh man, I would have said this. This is exactly what you wanted to say now, and it's exactly what you would say in five minutes or two hours. There's no questions. There's I've, no questions. Yeah, I've thought about absolute. everything. What's your favorite color? Blue. Okay. It's blue. It's not green. It's not yellow. It's blue. Mm. Love that. Thank you. What's your favorite color? Blue. Action. Justin understands the actor. He's not just a technical guy. I mean, he knows his equipment too, but he primarily has a way to not just convey his vision to the actor, but he has a way to get into the actor's head and uses certain methods, which I found unique and very interesting, to you know, plant seeds in the actor's head. For example, like scene three, with Steph making her take off her shoes and socks and wearing wet socks because I don't think anything is more infuriating than walking around or doing life in wet socks. For Fritz, I knew that in scene 10, I wanted to make a booklet of just some really jacked up images because I wanted to show him what was in his mind. When you see a gun, that's one thing, but when you see the mind that's holding the gun, I think that's much scarier than the gun. It was um, very unique in, in, at, at times and, uh, and inspiring. Ich habe durchgehalten. Ich habe durchgehalten! I think a lot of great directors do 
whatever it takes to connect with their actors. And I think Justin's not adverse to uh, putting himself in situations where he might look like a fool to the rest of the crew, but in the end he connected with an actor in a serious way. Something I will say about Justin that, I, that I, I've always appreciated, you know, uh, and it was a, a big reason why I just, I believe in him, is his voice and his particular way that he approaches story. All of his short films you can look at and go, I haven't seen something exactly like that before. Justin's just got a very interesting perspective on people and on life, and he's got a very specific vision for when he wants to tell a story. You know, there's a lot of people just trying to make something that they think other people will like. Justin could not care less, <laughs> and that's what I love about him. It's not a negative thing, it's not a lack of empathy, it's the abundance of it, because he's just looking at humanity as a whole through his eyes and there's so much love behind everything that he does that it's not this whole I'm just trying to be you know controversial or something I don't think that's a part of his thinking either I just don't think he cares about any of that it's here's my story here's how I see the world and this is something I gotta say there's a reason everybody keeps wanting to come back and work with him who have worked with him in the past and you know what makes him so different as a director as opposed to other filmmakers you can't help but love to work with somebody like that because we all get better. It's the tide rising and all the ships are rising with it. Wow. Whoa. Mic check. Justin warned you about me, right? <laughs> <laughs>
under the TV and it's blaring. She's like, starts talking about ESPN and how they're just yelling at each other. And I was like, oh, they kind of make a living, you know, arguing about sports and blah, blah, blah. And, and I admired his socks. And she tells me she's from Boston and we talk about Tom Brady. And she asked me if I believe that he deflated the footballs. And I asked her if she was there in Boston when Larry Bird played. And so then he said, what do you do and where do you live? And I did the same. And he told me that he was a filmmaker. It ends up with her sharing with me that she moved to South Carolina and her husband of almost 52 years passed away from cancer. And I share with her how I lost my brother to cancer. And so we struck up this deep conversation. And the fellow who was cutting Jenna's hair came by and he said, Justin, I'm sorry, I'm running late. And he said, don't rush. And she shares that she's a Holocaust survivor. And all I'm thinking is, oh my God, you're the lady that I wrote. The timing led to me sharing about Guest of Honor. And at first she was kind of blown away that a young person would remember anything World War II related. And we just made this wonderful connection. We exchanged, you know, email and we kept in touch. And he said, would you be willing to play the last uh, frame is Anna in her older years. And she has never acted before. She is not an actress. She is just this amazing, spunky, hilarious, poignant lady who's almost 80. All day on set, I'm just like, I can't believe I met her. This is so crazy. And all that happened was because it was just like the end of the film where she's in a public place and she probably wouldn't be talked to by anybody. Justin has the most amazing, kind heart and such a deep compassion. He just touches my heart deeply. I want to thank all of you for being involved in this amazing project because it's really important to get the emotional stories out. Tissue, sir. You know, it's been 80 years since the Holocaust. Someday it's going to be like studying the Civil War. It's going to be without any emotion. The story will be there, but... The generation of people who went through that, like, they're kind of, most of them are passing away or ha have already passed away, and so those stories, um, in some sense, sorry, I feel kind of emotional about it. Um, I feel like they're going to get lost. So I think it's really important to tell these stories because I feel like, like they can't be lost, they can't be missed. On behalf of all the victims and the survivors, thank you.